continue to serve our country both home and abroad? Thank you. As usual, anyone with cell phones, please turn them on or put, turn them off or put it on vibrate. Anyone with a hat, please remove it for the duration of the council meeting. Clerk will call the roll. Councilor Anderson. Yeah. Uchi. Here. Christensen. Condon. Here. DePietro. Here. Fallon. Here. Kinnon. Murphy. Here. Nestor. Here. Spatafora. Here. Lucy. Here. A um, little out of order on the agenda tonight. We have a, a young man, and I'm going to turn it over to uh, Councilor Nestor. There's a young man we want to recognize in the crowd tonight. Councilor Nestor. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, some, of you, some of you may know, each year, the uh, Malden West Little League and the Malden East Little League um, send teams to a Jimmy Fun tournament. It's, each year, it's a nine-year-old team, a 10, 11, and, and a 12, if there's enough 12s. Um, and we asked that kids, um, either the parents pay a little bit of money for the tournament or the kids go out and raise some money for the tournament and uh, it, it's a great tournament all the proceeds go directly to the Jimmy Fund so we have one youngster out in the audience tonight who uh, went way above and beyond the call took it upon himself to, uh, to raise some money raised over $1,900 by himself uh, for the Jimmy Fund so we just wanted to uh, congratulate Nathan Shea and uh, thank him for all his, uh, his hard work I know the Jimmy Fund appreciates it so what we're going to do, Nate, we're going to give you a, uh, a citation, and it says, uh, Be it hereby known to all that the Marlin City Council hereby his office is sincerest congratulations and best wishes to Nathan Shea in recognition of your tireless efforts, determination, and volunteerism in helping the Jimmy Fund raise over $1,900 for the fight against cancer. You are a tribute to your family and friends, and we are proud to have you in our community. Given this uh, fourth day of October 2011 and signed by all the council members. So, if you wouldn't mind coming up and uh, grabbing it, if you want to say anything, Nate, you can jump on the microphone. <laughs> no? <laughs> Nathan, just turn around and smile because you are on TV, okay? Maybe we'll come down and get a picture with you with your mom. Yeah. So, if I could take a five minute recess so we can get some pictures with Nathan. Uh, his uh, um, ability to do things like that from his, his mother, Marie Shea, who's in, along with, with Buzzy Colbert, who was there also, who started the Challenger League for the West Division. It was a phenomenal success. So we know where Nathan gets it from. Very good. Thank you. Okay. Okay, next on our business, we have... Um, the request of uh, Council Bucci, representatives of the Department of Conservation and Recreation will appear to discuss conditions at Town Line Harbor. Council Bucci. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, yes, uh, a few weeks back we had, um, I made the request that we bring uh, the folks in from the DCR to speak to the community as well as the 11 of us um, and trying to best understand um, 
your obligation to the municipality as it relates to um, the brook, or how we refer to it as the culvert. Uh, my understanding is there's about four um, culverts, so to speak, across the city, but I'm uh, not wanting to be so specific about Ward 8, but Ward 8 is uh, an area that is the uh, town, bro uh, town line brook um, is, resides in specifically. <coughs> And we are definitely having a uh, difficult time, very challenging time in the Ward 8 area related to pest management. And um, recognizing that there are several variables uh, that contribute to that. Um, um, one of those variables, though, for me, um, is obviously the obligation of the state to help us manage a safer and um, better positioned community from a, public's, um, pu from a public Board of Health perspective. So if you wouldn't mind tonight, if you could come up to the podium and introduce yourselves, um, I would personally like to hear um, what exactly does your um, particular department of the state um, um, what type of functions you're performing, again, because the public is listening, it will be helpful to educate those folks as well as us, um, but also um, what is it that your um, department is doing to uh, meet the needs and to meet the obligations um, um, to, to, to the city of Malden. So I'm going to turn the evening over to you or the next few minutes over to you, and most likely we'll have some questions fielded, but if you could give us a bit of overview of your, your work and what it is that you are expected to do or will do for the community re regarding this particular issue. Thank well, you. Hey, Kazabuchi, if you could just step up, step up to the mic, state your name, and um, maybe discuss some of the things that Kazabuchi had mentioned. Uh, thanks, Mr. President. Thank you, uh, Council and Councilor and uh, Madam Clerk. My name is Dan Hunt. I'm the Director of Government Affairs for the Department of Conservation and Recreation. And um, yeah, my name my name's uh, Nick Gove. I'm the North Region Director uh, for DCR. And just as kind of a basic overview um, of of assets uh, that. Hold on one second. Okay. I'm sorry. Uh, but I was just going to say be, before we get. You come closer a little bit to the mic. That'd be great. Thank sure. you. Great. Um, <coughs> it's a nice setup. You know? um, but just would say first and foremost, thanks for the opportunity to uh, come in and foster the relationship. Um, there's a lot of DCR property in, uh, in the municipality and we want to get a better sense of the actual issue and how it can better fit into, um, into your system. Um, I personally have had a great working relationship with uh, the elected delegation, the reps and senators and um, at times members of the council and want to just say up front that um, I've got given my communication uh, to the clerk and some contact information and um, other than this formal setting if we can expedite requests for um, for different needs that you have we're absolutely um, very happy to do so I think with the particular issue relating to um, to the culvert to the town line brook um, DCR has taken some some steps over the years as you know, it's a, it's a large piece um, dealing with urban drainage and um, was put in by the Army Corps of Engineers uh, as a, a way to keep the water out of people's homes, obviously. And, and I think we'd like to hear from you what, what your concerns are specifically, but also um, to work with you to, to fit into your system. And I, I, Nick might be able to speak to... Yeah, and just just kind of a just an additional overview as far as other assets that we we manage in the community. We manage the Holland Memorial Pool up the street. Um, obviously, the Middlesex Fells Reservation, um, the Townline Brook Canal, which we're here to talk about tonight, and uh, and you know some of the other parkways in in the neighborhood. Um, but as far as the the Townline Brook Canal is concerned, um, we we do have care and control of that structure. And, and we are responsible for maintenance of it. It is our, um, it's, as Dan said, it's part of a, a, a larger um, urban stormwater drainage system. Um, and, you know, we'll we'd love to hear what some of the specific issues surrounding that, uh, that structure are. Okay, thank you, gentlemen. Any questions, Councilor Bucci? 
Okay. Um, well, thank you for the brief introduction. I do appreciate um, hearing from you folks that contact information is available so that we would be able to engage ourselves in some um, hopeful, proactive, um, a, pro a, pro a proactive approach to managing the concerns. Um, in, a, in I guess in my um, brief time as the counselor, having um, a consistent, um, I've had consistent information brought back to me that is actually increasing um, concerns related to the lack of maintenance of the culvert. Now, I, I have taken you know, my time and gone down to the uh, brook and have certainly looked at its status and recognized that you know, some drainage systems and other major work seems to be um, needed there, but obviously I'm not that highly skilled in what should be done from an engineering standpoint. However, the trash, the debris, the things that are being left there, certainly in my mindset, um, add um, um, some, t some items to the to-do list that should be able to be done rather effectively um, and easily by bringing some folks in to just clean the culvert. And then we're talking about, you know, it's overgrowth, you know, again, from the simple um, work of cutting back the vegetation. Um, homes that are abutting that area are certainly experiencing a, a, a higher incidence, as I was speaking to you folks earlier, related to rodent um, management. Um, we know it's a wet area. We know that there are, other, as I said, other um, variables that affect that um, problem and make that problem all the worse. But I, in my four years, I, and I have not seen any type of formalized plan or any type of um, structured um, actions that are um, in place. And again, maybe for my lack of having that information, but in trying to um, ascertain that has been most difficult. With, again, no disrespect for you folks, it's actually to a point that it has escalated um, um, in that area that we, we, I'm pleased to see you here tonight. Um, I know that other <laughs> folks related to um, that you speak to up from the delegation has done, have done some significant work in managing floodgates. But the key problem is that it's not maintained, it is full of trash, it has become a dump site, and that just ultimately leads itself into being, um, you know, re it has a result of the um, impact to the quality of life not being as, as it should be the best that we can. So I'm looking for you folks to be able to explain to me how often people go to those particular locations. This one I'm honed in on because that's my, uh, logistically, that's where I live and that's where I advocate for. But, you know, I do know that, as I said earlier, um, there are other areas that have the same problem. So how does one manage a cleanup of the culvert? Yeah, I think what we um, kind of now have a little bit better uh, understanding of what the issues are. We can go in and investigate the site, see if there's an increase in, in dumping down there. Uh, our first priority for removal would be anything that we felt that was obstructing uh, flow in the culvert. Um, that, is, that is the primary function. So we, we, we can investigate that. Um, we can also kind of look at, the, at the, you know, that area as a whole. Um, the, the rodent control issue is, is a little bit more complicated. Um, that, that is something that we would need um, some cooperation with the city on, um, as, well, as, well as, the, as well as the residents. Um, you know, one of the one of the problems is is you know, the food source is generally what um, they're attracted to. So, um, you know, we could we could investigate um, doing some rodent control measures, um, but they would be more effective if we did that in in conjunction with some other measures. You know, um, limiting you know when household trash goes out, making sure that it's properly secured, that type of thing. So, Nick, and, and again, I'd ask that you speak a little closer to the mic so folks can, can sure. um, hear you. Um, we, as a community, in the four years I've sat in this seat, have um, definitively applied resources and manpower to managing keeping that area to the best of our ability clean. Um, we're at that point where those efforts um, have been changed slightly because of the federal EPA standards that have been changed as of August 1st yeah. to um, treat the issue. Um, but in all of that, we really haven't had an engagement of the DCR 
although I know myself, the residents, I know folks have reached out. So, you know, that's all water under the bridge, so would speak. I don't think there's a lot, well, there actually is a lot of water down there, but at the end of the day, I'm looking for a formal plan from, you know, whether it's engaging in a commitment from the DCR to sit down, um, map out a strategy of how we would want to address it. Um, I think by cleaning it out and uh, obviously cutting back the vegetation, you're reducing the harborages, you're re reducing, I mean, there are obviously, uh, it'll have a positive effect. I'm also looking for that to be timely. Um, you know, we're at, a, as I said earlier, we're at a state of, I think it is a state of urgency. Um, last week, this municipality has sent out a communication to the uh, folks who live there using their reverse 911. As I said earlier, we're having a Thursday night meeting at the local school, um, speaking about this issue with residents because we all are part of the solution. So, you know, but as I said earlier, you know, I'm, I'm looking for a plan to come from your, your, um, um, your department. Um, so could you define exactly what you would be willing to do or commit to us tonight to do on, on behalf yeah, I, of those folks? Yeah, unfortunately, I can't, really, I can't really commit to anything tonight. We'd have to go investigate the area a little bit closer, get a real kind of handle on what, what the scope um, of, of the problem is down there. Um, so I, I would, we would have to report back to you um, with, a, with, you know, what our, what our current capabilities are, and, and you know what kind of resources we would need for a larger project. So for me, it feels simply satisfied that you know you've taken your time to come out, and, and I certainly want to continue my um, efforts to to move this issue along, um, and engage all the right folks. Um, you speak about coming out to do an analysis and investigate the steps. When could that happen? I know it's a, it's in theory. It sounds like it, that would be the natural next step, but I'm asking for a commitment. Um, but if you can't provide it to, at this moment, is there a way to provide that to us within the next 24 hours? You know, you have to go back well, to wherever you have to. But I, I do want you yeah, to I, have I think some we can, tonight. Yeah, I think we can certainly go out and do an assessment um, pretty, pretty quickly. That, that's not something that's going to take a, 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 a long time. Um, kind of reporting back on, on you know, what our, what our capabilities are and when, when we can actually do the, you know, the proposed work, if we can do it at all. Um, that, that may take some time, but we, I think we, we can commit to getting back to you uh, as soon as possible with you know, what, what we see as issues down there. So between yourself and, and Mr. Hunt, are you willing to commit that you can give me a time frame and a plan by the end of this week about when you would go to the culvert, assess the culvert, give me an idea when you'd come back to say what we can and can't do. We would sit with the director of our Board of Health um, and any other stakeholder who needs to be there. Um, because again, I, I, I think, you know, winter's settling in, some of this stuff is only gonna get worse as folks, uh, folks as the um, particular um, issue um, that we have looks for another place to harbor. Right now in the weather, in the high grass, they've found their harborages, but we need to eliminate that. Yeah, I, I think, um we're very anxious to work out a plan with you and, and uh, the city on on how to mirror our plans together. I think there's uh, a number of issues. If you can gauge the community's um, kind of thoughts on your Thursday meeting as to what the scope of work we're actually talking about. I know that in a, a separate community when we're discussing clearing a certain area there was a significant amount of pushback um, because people liked the amount of vegetation that was there. I mean, clearly, you're pointing out some some points on some of the lower level planting and stuff like that. And I think we can commit to um, working out some sort of management plan to address it. Um, I don't know what the extent of that management plan would be over time, but I can tell you that we did install a uh, new trash gate at. Uh, I don't know. I'm not super familiar with. Um, your particular area, but I know that further down they installed a new trash gate that uh, the operations staff has worked diligently on pulling out a lot of household trash, air conditioners, um, carriages, and, and the like to maintain um, the culvert as a urban drainage piece. And, and I think in order to work with you on the rodent issue and whatever that happens to be, I think we're, we're, um, we're willing to work with you on on your plan and, and to
put forth some sort of management plan going forward, and we would absolutely commit to, you know, reporting back um, next week sometime or at the end of the week. Nick will go out and we'll survey the uh, the area and we'll okay. have some sort of formal response to the um, to the council by the end of next week. All right, so that would be the 14th of October. So we would have uh, communication from you having done performed an, um, some type of evaluation of the culvert. Um, and then from that communication, we can work with our uh, Board of Health Director and others and come up with a strategic approach to how we would be able to cooperatively with your department, the city, residents, and any other particular um, you know, stakeholder and come up with mapping out a plan of action. Absolutely. Um, certainly do appreciate that. Would also welcome you uh, in terms of wanting to get a gauge of how the public feel. Um, would certainly welcome you to come back uh, to come back to Malden on Thursday night at 6:30 at the Linden School. Um, we will. We are anticipating a very active discussion, um, and a lot of that discussion is to listen to our residents. But it's also really been fo focused on providing information and instruction. Um, I think we've called it a, a seminar so that folks can also understand the necessity and responsibilities that we need to engage in um, in keeping our community as healthy as it can be. But it truly has, a, uh, I think, a, a, as I said earlier, an urgency to have your involvement. Um, and I am pleased, you know, that you folks did come out tonight um, and are willing to participate with um, um, at least the evaluation process. A date has been set, and we will then uh, circle back with you. Um, I don't have any other questions. I think most of my colleagues understand the difficulty that we've been managing. Um, I don't know if anyone else has questions that they'd like to ask. But if not. Taking my job, huh? What's that? Does anyone, <laughs> does anyone have any sorry. questions? Sorry. Seeing the lights. Thank you, gentlemen. And now uh, we await the report. Thank you, Council Thank Bucci. you. Thank you. Next order of business. Approval of the minutes from the meetings of September 20th and September 27th. On Council, on Council Christian's motion to approve the minutes, all in favor? Aye. Opposed? Minutes are approved. Dear members of the Council, pursuant to the provisions of law, I hereby reappoint Elaine F. Ritter's House of 65 Garden Street, Malden, Massachusetts, as a member of the Register of Voters Board, said term to expire March 31st, 2015. Very truly yours, Richard C. Howard, Mayor, confirmation is required. On Council Kinner's motion to refer to the, the appointment committee. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Mr. Mayor, House referred to the appointment committee. Application for license to drive a taxi cab, Tariq Alamari, 35 Macoba Street, Revere. On Council Yannis, motion to refer to license. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Papers referred to license. Application for livery license for three vehicles, Kennedy Classic Limo, 63 Hanover Street. On Council Yannis, motion to refer to license. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Papers referred to license. Ordered that the city investigate the state GIC health plan as an optional form of health insurance for city employees. Council Fallon. Council Fallon for the paper. Thank you, Mr. President. I'd like to see if we can push this into the Finance Committee. Um, as we all know, there have been changes made um, as recently as July, um, which may involve um, some alternatives that we can look at. Um, where relief is brought to different cities and towns, and it also affects, um, or, or actually has a positive result in some ex expediting um, resolution to various contract disputes. So um, it also encourages a coalition bargaining. So I'd like to refer this to finance and see if we can explore it. Any questions for Council Fallon? Council Nesta. Yeah, uh Thank you. Mr. Is finance the right place to start off with this? Because it is a health, it, it is a health care, it's, it's a uh, city. Uh, Just thinking financially. Yeah. Yeah. I know it eventually would have to end up there, but I'm not sure where, where it should start. Hmm. I, I, Just throwing it out there. I think well, they're willing to take it in finance, I, but I'm not, I'm not sure if that's the I think proper finance place to start the appropriate venue myself, but you're the chairman. <coughs> yeah, no, no, I, I don't have any issues with it coming in. Um, I just didn't know. If, and we'll have to have the HR director and the mayor down to something that the mayor would have to 
uh, speak mm -hmm. on and, and, and bring in. So before, we, before finance can do anything, there have to be a, a number of other discussions with other departments. So I'm uh, more, more than willing to, uh, uh, no issues bringing into finance and, and, and coordinating that if need be. Just point of information, we, you know, as far as health insurance goes, we, we'd have to give it to the mayor's office anyways, eventually, so. Well, let's see if we can discuss it, if you don't mind, Mr. Chairman, in the committee, no. and then yeah. we can go from there, see yeah. what resolutions we can come yeah. up with. Thank you. Okay, any other questions? Yeah. Uh, Councilor Christensen. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. Through you to the sponsor. Um, would this be moot where the administration has recently collectively bargained, you know, the new health insurance system for the next, I think it was two or three years? Not for all units. Um, There's one of them, not, right? And then also, as you know, we have some units uh, in the middle of arbitration and entering arbitration still. So I don't think it's a moot point. I think we should be taking a look at it. Because of the new changes right. that just came about, I think it's something worth worthy of exploring. Okay. So these weren't in effect, of course, as we all know, prior to July. So now that we, you know, we've reconvened as a body, I think it would be good to look at. Yeah, I understand. So you're not suggesting that we undo what has been no, recently. No, no, no. I think we look at look at these as options moving forward in the future. Okay. So, thank you. And it'd be nice, um, Councillor, for this body to be able to uh, look at these as alternatives, and and the people here um, to be able to look at this. I mean, we we can take a look at what Medford's done, where they've saved, I think it's in excess of 32 million dollars by participating in this now that it's available. So, I think it's just it would just it's just responsible, I think, for us where it is available now, for us to explore it as an option yeah, and yeah. Uh, help the future. So, right. look at look at it for the future. Okay, Councilor Christian. Yeah, I was just going to say, with the caveat being the law is pretty clear that, you know, if the city can show that they're saving less or at the same amount as the state, then mm -hmm. the state law really is not applicable to us, which I think the most recent changes negotiated are within that standard. So, but, you know, I think as the Council said, no, no harm, no foul, it never hurts to look. But I just wanted to be clear that all the hard work mm -hmm. that had gone on to these recent packages we're not looking to undo at this juncture. Although actually, it, we, there is a new provision which mm -hmm. allows for a um, quicker 